Theo Harris, and then, of course, our own Dave Damashek. 902 players voted. Mm -hmm. Were you one of them? Yes, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely was this year. And that <laughs> earned you uh, a spot on the show here today. Now, Julian Edelman comes in at number 71. What did you think of that ranking? Um, I think it's it's about right. You know, he, he's he's a heck of a ball player. There's there's a lot of great receivers out there. So uh, I think the ring is about right, right, right now. But clutch receiver, two fourth quarters and two straight Super Bowls for the Patriots, and he makes uh, big plays, decisive plays. I'm sorry to bring that up because 49. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't don't, don't bring that. Don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> I think two he would have won the Super Bowl if you would have stayed healthy in the fourth quarter. I agree. <laughs> All right. Well, 12 receivers are ranked higher than him according to our list because there's four. 14 receivers on the list, and he's the second to be revealed. Some people think Julian Edelman doesn't get enough respect in the league, but other people say without Tom Brady, maybe he wouldn't be who he is. Where do you guys stand? Well, I think I think he is kind of a role player. Uh, a lot of people think of him like the Wes Welker or something like that, but but he makes plays, though. He, he understands the scheme. He understands the defense. He does some great things for him, right? Well, he and his pal Amendola both feel a little slept on within the organization, witness the fact they go get Brandon Cooks. Malcolm mm. Mitchell on the rise. Have we seen the best of Julian Edelman? That's the question going forward. All right, and his former teammate, because this man came in, um, for the first time on the list, LeGarrette Blunt, mm -hmm. former teammate. Remember, LeGarrette Blunt doesn't have a team right now. That's crazy. Yet, he's on the top 100 list. Um, it's surprising, too. This is his first time on the list, Dave. That's surprising. Yeah, you know, you wonder if you look ahead now. He leads the league in touchdowns, plus he goes for over 1,100 yards. You know that uh, Belichick likes to spread the carries around there, and yet he has a very nice year. Don't you think a team like the Packers could have some use for that? They have a guy wearing 88 in the backfield. <laughs> they don't need a banger like this, Come what, what they envisioned Eddie Lacy to be. Maybe Blunt is the reality going forward. It's just it's just weird to me that he could, he could be on the top 100, and not one team is calling him right now. I mean, he's a big back. He's going to get the touchdowns. Obviously, he ran for over a thousand yards. I mean, what else? What else do you need to do as a running back yeah. to, to get a call at least? Those free agent <laughs> running backs are a funny thing. How much money do you want to put into a guy? One thing that is not a question is whether or not Philip Rivers is a good quarterback. The question is, he doesn't get to the championship. He doesn't get to the Super Bowl. So mm -hmm. he comes in um, 27 spots down from last year at number 73. 14 quarterbacks are better than him in this league, according to this list. I don't know about that. I don't know. I mean, it's hard for me to name 14 guys that are that are more consistent than him, that that is better than him, that played better than last year. Um, but you know, the the rankings are what they are, I guess, at the moment. But he's a heck of a quarterback, tough dude. Um, I, I think he's top 10 for sure. Look at the body of work. What? I mean, over 900 NFL football players voted on this list, and like you say, put 14 names ahead of his. He to me, he's right on the cusp of the Hall of Fame. Hear me now, believe me later. No, no, in the this break. Is going in to be the break. He's a Hall he's of Famer. Fame. He's a Hall of Famer. You I'm said like, it. Don't, don't back know. down off that thing. He's going to be after the 2017 <laughs> season. He puts up with a returning Keenan Allen, yeah. and Mike Williams. When the Chargers make a run at the Raiders, according to Dave oh, Damashek. Put yeah, that, I don't know about put that, that one, in, in the books. <laughs> All right, Justin Houston, he dropped the exact same number that he wears on his jersey. He dropped 50 <laughs> spots. How ironic is that? To number 76. It's the second biggest drop so far this year. Adrian Peterson was the biggest. Um, he wasn't healthy this year, though. So what does that say about him? I mean, the man got four sacks in five games. I mean, it's, it's people to play the whole 16, season, 16 weeks and don't get that many sacks. So uh, he's very well respected. He's a, he's a heck of a pass rusher. I know I watched film on him throughout the years. And, um, you know, to get ranked and, and, and still only played five games, pretty impressive. Every team is going to have injuries. And, you know, I often compare big injuries to, to the game Jenga, you know. The Jenga theory, if you take out the wrong piece, yeah. the whole thing implodes. Yep. That's what Justin Houston is to the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, you saw when he's not on the field versus when he is, how different that defense looks. He is uh, underrated. You know, Strahan broke the sack record. It was a national uh, festival. Yeah. <laughs> this guy came a half sack short, and like no, no one even noticed about it. it. No yeah, the defense knows it, does yeah. look different when he's on the field, 22 sacks different. That's, that's, that's the right. biggest difference right there. That's a lot. Uh, 